Welcome learners of this MOOC on skill development for youth and uh, livelihood. You have already learned the various concepts of skill, skill development, and the need and relevance of skill development training in the present situations. In order to successfully run an enterprise, the learners, you will have to have, as prospective entrepreneurs, you will have to have entrepreneurial and managerial skills. These skills are very important. Moreover, as a prospective entrepreneur, you will have to take advantage of the entrepreneurial ecosystem, the different benefits, advantages which are available in our surrounding ecosystem. So in this module, we shall discuss those aspects one by one. This is the 27th module of your course and we shall discuss various aspects related with all these aspects one by one. You see, in availing credit or successfully running an enterprise, capital plays a very significant role in entrepreneurship development in any plan of economic development. If there is scarcity of capital, there will be problems in starting new enterprises. So a sound financial system mobilizes the small and scattered savings of people. You and me, we all are citizens. We save money in the banks. And banks accept those deposits, channelize those, and extend credit. So a sound financial system mobilizes the small and scattered savings of people which are made available for investment in development-oriented projects and productive enterprises. We need hydro project, we need development project, we need railways. For all this, we need money. Where from this money will come? So a financial system has to be in place to take care of all these aspects. Moreover, for the productive enterprises, credit is very important. So this credit creation is an important function of the financial institutions. What are those financial institutions? We see the banks all around, State Bank of India, United Bank of India. We see develop, different other banks like say Small Industries Development Bank of India. We see microfinance institutions. We see Reserve Bank of India. So different financial institutions are there. So they play a very important role in credit creation. In addition to extending credits, the financial institutions provide some other non-credit services to the prospective entrepreneurs. Sometimes they organize entrepreneurship development programs. Sometimes they launch some schemes of extending subsidies, capital waiver. So they provide various schemes for setting up new small-scale units, their expansion, as well as the modernization of the enterprises. Suppose leather industry or say pottery. So there could be at the earlier the craft related pottery and the nowadays it is a mechanized pottery. So there is a scope for mechanization. So they offer some schemes. So they provide special promotional schemes for ex-servicemen, women, entrepreneurs and they provide equipment finance and some of these are credit based and some are integrated with non-credit components. Ultimately, the totality counts. So in this 27th module, dear learners, we shall mainly take up three objectives. One is that we shall try to understand the concept of financial institutions. Then we shall try to understand the role of these financial institutions in extending credit facilities. Then we shall discuss the role in extending other facilities, which are mostly non-credit facilities. So we shall take up these objectives and hope after listening to this video, after going through this video, and then reading your material, which has been provided in the course, you would be able to understand the concept of financial institutions. You would be able to understand the role of the financial institutions in extending credit, as well as non-credit or other facilities. So what is the concept of financial institutions? 
A financial institution is a business organization. They have to run in a professional manner. A financial institution is a business organization or a developmental organization. Like say Small Industries Development Bank of India. That is a bank. That is bank is development bank for small industries. SIDB, Small Industries Development Bank of India. Like say State Bank of India. This is a financial institution. So a financial institution is a business organization or a development organization which are engaged in the business of dealing with financial and monetary transactions such as deposit, loans, investment. These are the basic functions. They will collect deposits, they will extend loan, they will make investment in big projects. They themselves will make investment in projects. So financial institutions encompass a broad range of business operations. You see, MSME sector, we call micro, small and medium enterprises. In a country like India, MSME sector is very important because this is highly employment intensive. It can generate big, like, huge employment so that it can arrest our unemployment problem. So MSME sector development is also dependent on the role played by the financial institutions, role played by the entrepreneurs. So it is a huge potential for employment generation. Small industrial projects are of interest to different countries of the world. India, more especially in India, it is very important, specifically in our country, as we have a large number of unemployed youths. So MSME sector can generate employment and can absorb and uh, mitigate the problems associated with unemployment. And this also can take a very important role in the local or regional development because these are highly area specific. So these small enterprises have a number of challenges because small enterprises face several challenges including the difficulty of obtaining sufficient financial funding to sustain their activities. They may not have sufficient reserve fund to set up new projects for which they need financial assistance. So in this regard, the financial institutions will have to provide the assistance. The financial institutions extend the required help in the form of providing credit and other facilities. So while doing so, the financial institutions have to bear the risk of non-payment of the dues by the entrepreneurs. So that's where the non-performing assets or the bad loans, those come into play. Because financial institutes have to take a risk when they will extend the credit. So the ultimately those credit will have to be repaid. The loans will have to be repaid. And these enterprises can be sick for a variety of reasons. This could be because of internal reasons within the enterprise. Right? The entrepreneur may not have the required skills. Or it could be because of the external reasons. Could be the natural calamities, art or could be some big changes in the environmental process. So there could be a variety of reasons for enterprises being sick. Industrial sickness is a big problem, right? Every, all the new products which are launched in the mar market may not be successful. So the types of financial institutions, the most common types of financial institutions which are extending credit and other facilities to the entrepreneurs include national level developmental organizations government of india level and this is concerned about the development of that particular sector in the across the country like say khadi and village industries commission so khadi and village industries corporation will take up various schemes for the development of the kvi sector khadi and village industries across the country Likewise, at the state level also there could be Khadi and Village Industries Board. Suppose in Assam, say Assam Khadi and Village Industries Board, that is a state level. So national level developmental organizations are there. Then national level financial institutions, as I have told you already, Small Industries Development Bank of India, the Risk Capital and Technology Finance Corporation Limited. These are the national level financial institutions. There could be the commercial banks. As we all know, developmental banks, NABARD, National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development Bank, commercial banks, State Bank of India, Punjab National Bank, like that, and the regional rural banks, RRBs, say 
for example, in West Bengal, Bangiya Gramin Bikas Bank, in Assam, Assam Gramin Bikas Bank. These are important financial institutions which take care of the needs of the entrepreneurs, credit requirements of the entrepreneur, non-credit requirements of the entrepreneurs at the local level or at the regional level. State level financial institutions, as I have told you, Kadi and Bile Industries Board, state financial corporations, at a, as a state level public enterprise, SLPEs, then we are having the MFIs, microfinance institutions. So these are the various types of financial institutions, national level, then it could be uh, developmental organizations, it could be commercial organizations, it could be regional organizations, it could be state specific organizations, or it could be MFIs. Banks play a major role in financial markets. The operations of individual banks, how they acquire the deposits, use those deposits and manage funds to make a profit. They ultimately, they will have to sustain, they will have to earn a profit by mobilizing savings and disbursing the credit. And basically, all the functions of the banks are roughly similar all throughout the world. So the financial institutions are entities which offer a wide range of products and services for individual and commercial clients. It could be for individual customers, individual small entrepreneurs, or it could be like the organizations, the big organizations, companies, corporates. Is that it? So it could be for individual entrepreneurs, small micro entrepreneur at the individual level, or it could be at the larger level, which will be having a number of shareholders. So dear learners, you are basically the prospective entrepreneurs, so you will be mostly exp availing the facilities of micro credit. It may not be for the, right, you are may not be for the big enterprises. So they take care of all those things. So commercial banks are the oldest, largest, and fastest growing financial intermediaries. Others also important. But commercial banks, as we can see, it's all pervasive in all the towns, even the villages also. Rural penetration is there, regional rural banks are there, national banks have a mandate to open their branches in rural areas. So they help in mobilizing financial resources and employ them in investment projects and entrepreneurial ventures so that the enterprises can develop. The savings banks rely mainly on small savings to obtain their resources. Microfinance institutions, they are institutions that provide financial services to the poor. Bottom of the pyramid, poorest of the poor can be reached by the microfinance institutions. And the banks which may not have their branches in very remote areas, so they also operate through the models of business correspondence. Somehow, the attempt is to reach the unreached. Most of these institutions are based on microfinance programs and accept the deposit of microfinance amounts from their clients. That is the modus operandi of microfinance institutions. Commercial banks, as intermediary financial institutions, they deal with various credit instruments with time span. It could be long-term finance, it could be short-term finance, it could be just over, overdraft also, cash credit. We shall discuss some of those aspects. Role of financial institutions in entrepreneurship development, as I have been telling you, is very important, very high. They play a very important role. For starting an enterprise and sustaining it, the entrepreneurs will have to bear the risks and take challenging decisions in terms of investment. The current environment of business in this 21st century, we are experiencing a VUCA kind of environment. Here VUCA means, V means volatile, U means uncertain, C means complex, A means ambiguous. So in this type of environment, their, their learners, your prospective entrepreneurs, you see the kind of changes that we have experienced in the last three decades is enormous because of the advent of the ICT, information communication technology. The industry's definitions have been getting blurred. 
Earlier there was the music industry. Now with the in the handset, with the mobile handset, we are having everything, almost everything. So the current environment is highly uncertain, complex, volatile, and ambiguous as well. So here the entrepreneurs will have to take a higher amount of risks compared to those days in the stable environment. A small project by a new entrepreneur may have a high degree of risk or uncertainty. And for the purpose of achieving profitability and growth, the entrepreneur will have to identify the opportunities and pool the necessary resources and while doing so, the financial institutions are supposed to help them. Or the prospective entrepreneurs are supposed to mobilize help from the financial institutions. The financial institutions in collaboration with national and regional level entrepreneurship development institutions, like say in Ahmedabad, we are having the Entrepreneurship Development Institute in India. In Guwahati, we are having the Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship. Likewise, a number of entrepreneurship development institutions are there. So they collaborate with them, or the entrepreneurship development institutions collaborate with financial institutions. It's a mutually beneficial programs, ultimately to help develop the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So different industry associations also like that, like say Confederation of Indian Industries, PIKI, in Northeastern region, the Federation of Industries for Northeastern region, Finer, and different development boards, like say Coconut Board, Tea Board of India, Spices Board, Rubber Board, they also facilitate the development of the entrepreneurship ecosystem in respect of their particular mandated role, assigned role. Suppose the Spices Board will take care of right, different uh, units to be set up in the area of spices. Even the agro processing, agro, uh, export process development um, authority, they will take care of the different export opportunities for the entrepreneurs in India so that they can market their products outside the country at a good price so that they can earn better profit. So this is basically a collaborative effort of all these organizations so that the entrepreneurship ecosystem develops. And the prospective entrepreneurs are supposed to be aware about the various schemes. They can visit the websites of all these boards, coconut boards, rubber boards, spices boards, in respect of their specific industry and the different developmental organizations, then they should educate themselves. And likewise, the financial institutions are also supposed to reach them with their services. In today's context, modern economies, almost all exchanges are affected by money. Money is said to be the medium of exchange. The economies of scope between deposit taking and lending, giving the banks uh, provide all kinds of information because banks have an advantage. They have an advantage, information advantage over other finance companies because they accept deposits. So while accepting deposits, they have a history of the deposit of the respective clients. So the history, the deposit history of the firms may inform banks about the risks involved. Already a firm is connected with the bank, so they have been depositing the amount, so the bank is already aware about the transaction history of that particular firm. So, so that particular information will help the bank in taking decisions about extending credit or the other credit. At the same time, this also will help the bank in monitoring the requirements of working capital or the working capital finance. So financial institutions play a big role in extending credit, as I have been telling you. Credit plays an important role in driving the national economy as well. It provides leverage to an entrepreneur to undertake a project larger than what could have been undertaken. Because the entrepreneurs, their hands are tied. But if they can take meaningful assistance, resourceful assistance, they can go ahead with the availability of credit. Credit enables individuals and firms to own assets and repay the loan from their future earnings. 
This results in acceleration of production and distribution of goods and services. Then only they can afford to have the economies of scale. Adequate and cheap availability of credit propels the economy to grow in a higher trajectory. However, we will have to have a precaution also, is not it? Excessive availability of credit may cause inflationary pressure in the economy. So that credit disbursement, right, up to a limit. So bank credit can be either fund-based or non-fund-based. In case of fund-based credit, there is the actual transfer of money from the bank to the borrower. There could be some non-fund credit also. In non-fund credit, there is no transfer of money. However, the commitment by the bank on behalf of the client may result in future transfer of money to the beneficiary of, a, of such a commitment. Example of this could be the bank guarantee, where there is no actual transfer of money, bank guarantees it, which has the possibility of getting converted into a fund-based credit in case right, the commitment cannot be made. So banks in India provide mainly short-term credits by financing working capital needs. Project to project, right, there will be long-term credit also. So the types of advances, the various types of advances provided by them include loans, cash credit, overdraft, demand loan, installment or higher prices credit, installment facilities or higher prices, loans, cash credit, overdraft, right? These are the various things. We shall discuss some of this. So term loans. Term loans indicate loans sanctioned for a period expanding one year with specific schedule of repayment. That is term loan. Interim cash credit, bridge loans, pending disbursements of sanctioned term loans. A term loan has been sanctioned, but the actual benefits are yet to be availed. So to that extent, we can think about giving a bridge loan so that the entrepreneurs activities do not suffer. Or it could be installment credit, where repayment is spread over more than one year, and then the installment amount is fixed. They are advanced for purchasing fixed excesses, like individual customers will avail bank loan for purchasing our vehicles, is not it? So for meeting part of the capital cost of the new project, the entrepreneurs, like as we do individuals, may take advantage of these factors. Agricultural sector, credit is a very important. Provision of sufficient and timely credit at far, fair rates is very important. Otherwise, the money lenders, the Mahajans, as we all know, they are known for the exorbitant rate of interest. So provision of sufficient and timely credit at fair rates of interest has to be considered an integral part of institutional development of the agricultural sector. Sources of agricultural credit are grouped into two categories. One is institutional sources like say cooperative banks, governments, government agencies, the commercial banks, the non-institutional sources like money lenders, landlords, mahajans, and we all know they are having the inherent problems of charging exorbitant interest rates. So there is a problem with these sources. There could be the other facilities along with credit. We all know that State Bank of India, SBI, is a major financial institution of our country. It has made forays into some other countries also, other many countries, SBI. <coughs> it has established the SBI Foundation. SBI Foundation. So their vision is to become a premier institution in India to the bank's tradition of service beyond banking. Service beyond banking. It's a known as a banker. Service beyond banking. That is the other facilities. So what is that? By improving the socio-economic well-being of the society. So a financial institution has gone out of its own defined boundaries to help the status of improvement of the status of socio-economic well-being of the society. Likewise, government of India, as we all know, there are different schemes, campaigns, Startup India is a campaign, Stand Up India is a campaign, 
they are having various schemes so these schemes of the government like say startup india stand up india they are also geared up to help the entrepreneurs forming and sustaining the enterprises which ultimately contribute to the entrepreneurship development movement in india there are other agencies like say mudra micro units development and refinance agency another developmental organization which takes care of the units development and refinance it's another financial institution set up by government of india for development of and refinancing of micro enterprises so based on this we can think about a framework for micro enterprise development all these are basically in terms of entrepreneurship skill development so in this framework we have to see the developmental institutions the forces which contribute towards entrepreneurship skill development the different stakeholders are there the role played by the financial institutions in terms of extending credit in terms of extending non credit facilities so these are the various aspects which we discuss for in case of skill development for entrepreneurs skill development for livelihood because at our individual capacity we can go to a limit beyond that limit we need to have the assistance meaningful assistance resourceful assistance from our stakeholders and in this regard the major stakeholders could be financial institutions so these financial institutions not only facilitate the individual enterprise development they also facilitate the development of the entire entrepreneurship ecosystem which can have the multiplier benefit so in conclusion we can say that financial institutions will have to meet the challenges in the emerging this as i have told you phuka environment volatile uncertain complex ambiguous deregulated financial markets we have after 1990s so the banks are competing with each other to offer multipedias and diversified services to the customers and entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurs will have to take advantage of that automation of various services within the banks as we all know atm is there any time money automated teller banks is not it automated teller machines then electronic fund transfer now it is the other payment options are also emerged so the new norms of financing supported by the information technology the financial institutions are in a better position now to offer to penetrate to expand their services and to penetrate into the rural areas to make a better range of services to offer a better range of services to the prospective entrepreneurs so that they can develop their enterprises and which ultimately will contribute towards the livelihood of many families one enterprise will generate a number of employment opportunities so to that extent they need to be service responsive so this we have come to the discussion of module number 27 here we have mostly discussed about the role played by the financial institutions in extending credit as well as the non credit facilities and after this we shall discuss some other concepts related with enterprise enterprise development livelihood skill development there are legal issues production issues marketing issues hope you have enjoyed the learning wish you all the best thank you Thank you very much.